Hello everyone. Today I wanted to share with you from Paul Marshall's work titled Praise Song for the Widow. Now Paul Marshall is from Bayesian origins. Her parents moved to Brooklyn, New York from Barbados and she tells a fabulous story about Avi Johnson, the protagonist, who very nicely um, bridges Caribbean, American, and just black culture. Um, and so we get this glimpse into not just a Caribbean experience, but an American experience as well. I think it is important to know, as is outlined in the first few pages of the book, that Avi Johnson is a black middle-aged American, someone who is quite accomplished by American standards. She lives in the suburbs, her children are at university, she is quite successful. And of course, she is one of those women who vacations in the Caribbean annually. And so when she goes on a cruise with her friends, she has an amazing experience. And it is this that the work speaks to. So she goes on an annual Caribbean cruise. And as Claude McKay said, something ancestral is recaptured. And she has an amazing experience. The bit I want to read for you today starts on page 67. And it really talks about... Um, it really talks about an appreciation for Patwa. <laughs> That's what I wanted to emphasize, this, this reconnection with the language. Uh, so let's see what happens with Ava Johnson. So here's a glimpse of the book. You can see how ancient it is. I've had this one forever. So on page 67, it reads, He turned to her with a polite smile and pointing toward and pointing toward the empty roadway, spoke rapidly in Patois. Seconds later, she, smiling at her over his shoulder, he was moving away in the crowd. She realized then with a start that everyone around her was speaking Patois. She had been so busy examining them, she had failed to take note of their speech. Or her ears had perhaps registered it as a dialect English spoken in many of the islands, which often sounded like another language altogether. But reaching her clearly now was the flood of unintelligible words and the peculiar cadence and lilt of the patois she had heard for the first time in Martinique three days ago. There had been the same vivid, slightly atonal music underscoring the words. She had heard it and that night, from out of nowhere, her great aunt had stood waiting in her sleep. She became very still, frowning to herself under the protective shadow of her hat brim. Had that fleeting impression perhaps set off the dream? Sometimes the least thing seen or heard during the day, or merely thought of in passing, could trigger a dream of people and events long forgotten. Perhaps this was what had happened. The vaguely familiar sound of the patwa might have resurrected Tatem and the old woman. If so, she felt no wiser for the knowledge, no closer to understanding what had come over her since that night. Why, for example, she was standing on this wharf at the moment under a broiling sun, trying to find a taxi to take her to a plane home. E excuse me, do you speak English? This time, a growing note of urgency in her voice, she stopped an older man who was wearing a jacket over his open neck white shirt. Like nearly everyone there, he was carrying a colorfully wrapped package under his arm. Taxi? She jabbed a finger at the suitcases that crew members had deposited at her side before vanishing. She went through the motions of steering a car. The man laughed at her antics, then broke out in patois. He too pointed toward the roadway, and before turning to leave, he stretched his hand toward her in a way that said for her to be patient. Around her, the crowd continued to press toward the boats, their odd speech filling the air. They were clearly in a holiday mood. Nevertheless, beneath the festive voices reaching her ears, Avi Johnson thought she detected a sober, even solemn note. Many of those passing greeted Avi Johnson. A young couple leading two little girls in matching sundresses between them smiled and waved at her. An elderly man looking formal in a dark suit and tie lifted his hat. 
A woman in a bright yellow print carrying a small suitcase not only waved but called out something, something to her in Patois. Every minute or so, she stood there keeping an anxious eye on the roadway, someone would pause and greet her. And more often than not, address a few words to her before moving on. In return, she waved her hand and smiled and nodded politely to the brief one-way conversations she could not understand. They were being friendly, like most of the island people she had encountered elsewhere, but also she couldn't help but feeling more than friendly. There was a familiarity, almost an intimacy, to their gestures of greeting and the unintelligible words they called out. Pray song for the widow. I really enjoy this brief excerpt because, of course, Ava Johnson is experiencing what we experience in the Caribbean daily, the friendliness, the warmth of the people, but also the language that is so colorful and that speaks so vibrant, vibrantly of our history. So in Jamaica, we enjoy talking Patois. We drop a Patois everywhere we can, whenever we can, wherever we can. These expressions are secondhand, second nature. And as those of us who are Jamaican will also know, some things you just cannot express in English when you're excited, when you're scared. But it also is something that bonds us. And so Avery Johnson is surprised that all these people are passing by and saying hello to a stranger. But this is not new to us in the Caribbean. In the Caribbean, we are friendly people. And so for Black History Month, we want to continue to celebrate our language, celebrate the way we talk. It's an integral part of our identity. And we just want to make sure that we welcome those who come to our shores and share this friendliness with them. Paul Marshall's Pray Song for the Window, Widow tells a story about Avi Johnson and how she reconnects with her Caribbean roots, how she reconnects with what turns out to be innate, an integral part of who she is an essential part of her identity. There are so many of us in the Caribbean who are ashamed of our language, who attempt to hide our patois, who attempt to believe that it is broken English or a broken language, but as Louise Bennett would say, not at all. We have derived too, patois derived as well. We are celebrating this Black History Month, every facet of what makes us who we are, and so we embrace our language, our nation language, in the words of Edward Kamau Brathwaite, our nation language that distinguishes us from everyone else. So yes, my little book is old, but it's still wonderful read. And so I invite you this Black History Month to connect with your language, to have something ancestral recaptured and truly celebrate being the fabulous person that you are, whether you're from Martinique, from Jamaica, from the Cayman Islands, from Trinidad and Tobago, from the Americas, wherever you are as part of the African diaspora, celebrate who you are in totality. I am Dr. Stephanie Fullerton Cooper. Thank you so much for joining me again. I ask that you like, share, and subscribe to English Expressions with Dr. Steph. For Black History Month, I'm coupling my various uh, African clothing with my love of books, and I am sharing that with you. Thank you so much for joining. As you like, share, and subscribe, I look forward to seeing you next time. Sooner or later.